All right, Khalil, it is all you and your team. I believe I saw Mary Ann on, so I'm gonna add her. There she is. Hey, Mary Ann. Hi. Deacon Ken. Thank you for having me here. How you doing, Mary Ann? Hey. Nice Ashley, to meet you. Kim, are you ready? I'm ready. We're I'm ready. ready. Kim and I are ready, right, Kim? <laughs> Yes, we are, Mary Ann. <laughs> There's Kat and David. I think we're all here. Awesome. Um, so I, I just want to uh, welcome all of you who stayed on with us for this. Um, I, I hope, um, well, I know will be a very hope filled and joyful time mm -hmm. with these incredible artists. Um, I have a a little secret I'm in on, so I'm really excited for that to come out later on. Um, we just wanted to uh, let you know that um, when we turn it over to the artists, we'll be asking a, just a couple of questions in general for them, and they'll have two to three minutes to uh, respond. And when um, when we're done with those couple of questions, we will open it up to address questions that appear in the chat. So if you have a question for a particular artist or something that is said as we respond to these first couple of gen general questions, um, please feel free to type it in the chat and we will get to that at the end. So I'm gonna turn it over to uh, David who is going to start our introductions and then we'll begin with the first question. David, um, is your Wi-Fi working? Um, I think it is. Can you hear me or and see me? Yes. <laughs> okay, so apparently it is. Uh, my name is David Shepard, and just, just a short introduction about my background. I am formerly incarcerated, uh, so I'm, I'm impacted very, very much by the justice system. Uh, currently, uh, I am involved in an agency called Arizona Advocates for Ex Offenders, which we started about four years ago. We are minimizing our service right now due to financial situations, but at the same time, I'm still working with uh, people that have been in prison, assisting them with housing and uh, looking for employment and getting rights restored and just being a hope factor, as was mentioned in some of our earlier speakers, uh, to people that uh, has been impacted. Uh, uh, also, uh, most of my life since uh, back in the early 60s, I've been a community activist working with uh, people on the south side, east side, and west side of the inner city, um, just trying to give them a, a ray of hope. I will tell you guys that that saw the speakers earlier, I have been re-motivated. <laughs> my battery has been recharged, and I don't think it'll run down now for the rest of my life. I am so thankful to Khalil, who introduced me to the Arizona Faith Network folks, because I'll tell you something, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Katie Sexton, I mean, Dr. Katie Sexton, Reverend, she should be a doctor because she's in a healing mode. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. And uh, I'm, I've been out of prison now over 35 years. So I know I'm not going back now. I'm just here to give up hope that was given to me. And uh, let's go on ahead and have the artist introduce themselves. I understand that Kat's having trouble unmuting herself. So if somebody who's in charge of this can, can fix that for Kat. Um, let's kick it off um, to Mary Ann first, and then we'll go to hey. Kat and then K Khalil to give us an introduction um, about yourself, just a couple minutes, and then we'll get into our questions. So Mary Ann. Hey, I'm um, Mary Ann Chisholm. Oh. And I was in uh, Perryville prison from 2005 to 2018 um, on a wrongful conviction. I never got everything overturned, but I won substantial relief on appeal. And today, uh, the last part of my parole ended early. I just found out. <laughs> it's the first time I've been free in 20 years. <laughs> Congratulations, Mary Ann. I know. So I'm kind of an idiot, you guys. If if <laughs> if I suddenly start stammering and can't talk, or I train lose my train of thought, or look away and start sweating, that's why. <laughs> I uh, I'm an artist. I did five thousand six hundred and thirteen paintings when I was in prison. Um, I did a, a painting a day for every day that I could as a diary. 
when I got out of prison, um, I had, by the way, su supported myself with um, uh, commissary and I tried not to ask my family for money. But when I got out, I took the photos of those pieces that I did in prison. And now I am one of the top NFT artists in the world. <laughs> Top 1600. <laughs> and I know 1600. Well, I still got a ways to go, but I, I felt like I was um, justifying the heartache and the time by being able to provide for my family now. And um, if you look me up, it'll say I have over $60,000 in sales, but caveat we spend a lot of money to get them on the internet. So it's still, it, it's, it's exquisite because it was my pain and my hurt, my struggle, my missing my family, like we all know. And, um, and it ended up working for me when I got out, when I wasn't yet ready to work. So I'm just so profoundly grateful for everything. Thank you, Marianne. Khalil, can you uh, give us a little bit about your background for those that don't know you? Absolutely. So my name is Khalil Rashad. Um, I'm on this panel as an impacted person. So I take off all hats, all whatever's left of my hair, and <laughs> I'm just a panelist, um, you know, who was impacted by incarceration. I served 15 and a half years of a life sentence. And, you know, one of the tools that I was able to utilize to kind of ex escape the environment um, and the chaos around me was art. Um, you know, I was uh, introduced to art in high school before I dropped out. And, you know, I picked it back up in, you know, while I was incarcerated. And, um, you know, over the years that has been a way for me to kind of get away and, and, you know, release that energy and find that peace to go into this imaginary world of, of, you know, art to see the image, you know, you can create anything that, you know, your skills are, are permit you to, because I'm not, I can't do portraits. However, um, you know, I do landscapes and I do, um, lettering and, and, you know, calligraphy, things like that. So, you know, I, I, feel, I feel that there's a few things in this world that bring people together and it's art, music, and food. So, um, you know, thank you for having me here today. And um, I look forward to answering any questions. Thanks, Khalil. Kat, can you um, give us a brief introduction about yourself? Sure. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, my name's Kat, and I did 15 years also. Uh, my time started in 1977. I was released in 19, well, in 1992, January 2nd of 22 will be my 30 year anniversary of being out and unincarcerated. Um, but while I was there, uh, I mean, I, 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 I was introduced to art at a very young age. My grandmother was an artist. My uncle was an artist. Um, so it runs in the family. I have you know, grandsons that are artists. My son was an artist. Um, and... I was incarcerated very young. I was 19. Um, and I had, I was lucky enough to have taken a college course where I had a humanities, an art humanities teacher who allowed me to do an art project for my final. And those seven paintings, the watercolor paintings of Native American art were sent um, around Europe, I guess, where he took them, Archie Firelander took them with him to, uh, when he went to the trials, the U.S. trials against the, the uh, you know, the Native American people sued the U.S. Uh, 
over the trees and things. So he took those paintings and they ended up going, I don't know, all over the place. Um, that was the first serious introduction, you know, to actually doing some really, um, the type of art that just kept me going the whole time. And there was a period of time where I spent literally two years in isolation in the hole. And when they wouldn't give me enough paper and enough pens or enough of anything to draw with, I took to taking what pencils they did give me and putting murals on the wall until they would move me to another cell and paint the walls and then chastise me for drawing on the walls. But it is what kept my sanity. It is what kept me going. And it has continued to do that. Um, you know, you'll see at different protests around Phoenix, um, you will see my artwork at a lot of different protests uh, over the last five years. So that has become a, a big deal because it still is the thing that gives me the hope to keep pushing and keep fighting back. So it is a big part of what has been the healing process and the sustaining process and just the process for getting through uh, all the battles that we all face on a daily basis. So. Thanks, Kat. And I realize I forgot to introduce myself. So for those of you who don't know me, um, I am Reverend Kim Krucka in the Episcopal tradition. I'm uh, currently in Tucson and I coordinate the Episcopal Diocese of Arizona's prison ministry program. In particular, um, I, um, I guess the word is manage um, art exhibitions featuring artwork from mostly the women uh, who are in or have been in Perryville Prison. And I go all over the state, wherever anybody invites me um, to put up the art and to talk about it, raise awareness and raise much needed funds for these artists. So that's why I'm, I'm here on this uh, moderating this panel today with, with David Shepard. So uh, David, I'll turn it over you, to you to ask our panelists our first question. Yeah, uh, this is uh, to my very good friend, Khalil. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering um, how were you able, and also to uh, Marianne, how were you guys able to come out and still believe in humanity after doing so much time on convictions that weren't even um, things that you should have been doing time on that. But the question is, Khalil, but both of you guys, or either one of you guys could answer that. I would just want to get an answer from any one of you guys. Uh, I think Khalil is muted. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest part, and, and this is my everyday struggle, um, you know, I am upset because I, I lost more uh, than I gained. However, I had to humble myself. You know, I, I talk about really looking inward um, to see how I can always grow um, and mature, you know, and, and, and as I speak right now, I mean, I'm, I'm still growing. And, and I think growth continues until, you know, you're in a grave and you, and you can't grow physically no more. But I mean, it, it just took a lot for me to humble myself and, and realize the opportunity to um, make change here, you know, to get engaged, to uplift the, the, the voices of those who are most marginalized, who normally won't have a voice or their voices are silenced or nobody hears them. So, you know, I became that vessel and, and I've always said that, you know, I'm very fortunate, I'm blessed to be here and, you know, I, I don't own that blessing. You know, that blessing is meant to be shared. So that's why I'm here today. Um, you know, that's why overall I'm, I'm, I've kind of healed and it's therapeutic for me to be an advocate on the front line. For okay. me personally, I'm sorry. No. It, do you want to hear from me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. For me personally, I... Um, I was really sad. I felt like um, 
I felt like like I was persecuted in the media and in public before the case even started. And we lost our home, we lost everything. And I was so lucky all the same because um, my family never, never once doubted what happened. They never, they never spoke out against me, except for my sister, who's not my family. She's an odd adopted alien from a different planet, but everyone else was absolutely <laughs> awesome. And, <laughs> and uh, my husband stayed with me. We've been married 27 years. But when I came home, um, I came home because my mom raised $50,000 and, and she went to the press and she went to everyone just screaming. And a month before I was supposed to get out, Chuck Ryan decided to keep me for six more months because he had the power to. And my dad died. <laughs> and then when I got home, my mom didn't remember me. And I, sorry, mom. Um, I just was determined to make it not bitter and to think about how much I was grateful that I still had my kids and my family. And, um, so when I got, when I came home, I I began to create these these images of what I did in prison that were moving, that were animated, and that were different because I wanted to show that life went on, and I wanted to honor my parents. <laughs> But I was determined not to be a bitter shell. I was determined. I was determined to be grateful <laughs> for what I had and to help other people and to reach out to other artists who had been there and to just be kind every day. And what I'm doing now restored my faith in humanity. What I'm doing now and the people I met in the NFT community, some of whom we're in prison. What's remarkable about this community is you can take your art and you can sell it as an NFT and it's new and it belongs only to the person who bought it. And it's, a, it's your way of saying, with all due respect, it's your way of saying, I went on. An NFT is essentially an image of your painting but you can do things to it to make it come alive. You can collaborate with other people who know how to do that. And then you list it on the blockchain, which is like, um, like foundation.io or opensea.io. And if you look for me on Twitter, which is uh, at Marianne, M-A-R-Y-A-N-N-E, and then C H I S H O two. And I'm sure someone has that written down somewhere. If you write to me on Twitter, I'll help you. But uh, it is, it is a way of saying you took my, my life away from me. You took those years away from me, but you did not take my art away from me. And even if you seized it, as long as there's a photo, I can honor it. So that's what I did. That's why I still have faith again. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so very much for that. Very moving and I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Kat, <laughs> um, do you want to add anything? Kat? Uh, I, I can... Uh, relate to part of that. Uh, some of the some of the art that I did in prison went out to my family. Those are pieces they still have that my mother still has hanging on her living room wall. Um, that my brother has hanging on his walls. Um, there was a lot of that art that I gave away to people, mm -hmm. and 
I gave it away because it was a piece of me that I could release from that prison. Yeah. It was my way of freedom. It was my way of being released. That's uh, that's one of the things I guess that people who do art that is a way to find a way out of freedom that you physically don't have, but it allows you to keep your humanity. It allows you to keep your faith. It allows you. To continue fighting back, because I did a lot of that too. And by the way, I opened the Santa Maria unit at Perryville. <laughs> Not a legacy most people would be proud of, but we did build some things there that are no longer there. We did build programs and things, but that artist would help me keep going. So... It, it's true. You know, Kat, I, uh, I gave art to anyone who was pretty much really sad. And so if someone had a loss, if someone lost a family member, I would take my stack of paintings and I had poems on the back of all my paintings and I would read the poetry to them and whatever resonated most with them, I would tell them that they could have <laughs> that painting. And it always worked out. It always worked out to be the painting that they wanted or the painting that they felt most connected to. And it was so gratifying to do that. And I, I did do portraits unlike Khalil. Um, is, did I say that right? Yeah, I, I, I did portraits. I ended up becoming a hyper-realism portrait artist, but my soul wasn't in that because it was other people I was painting. I didn't really find my soul again until I started painting for myself. Well, like you, I, I like, unlike Khalil, I also did portraits, but oftentimes I did portraits of people that other people had lost. Yes. And so. it was a, I, I did that too. It, it's such a unbelievably gratifying thing to give love to someone who feels no love in a place that is so cold and so empty. It's irreplaceable. I think that that's one of the gifts that we have as artists is to bring a moment of relief and peace and joy to people who don't feel it anymore. And, and going back to something you said, Marianne, about um, you know, not have an income. Kat, you probably experienced the same thing. Like, you know, the wages inside the prison, when, when I first went into prison, we were paid 10 cents an hour to work in the kitchen. Um, you know, and, you know, David could tell us about a time you didn't get paid at all. You know, that was part of your time. Um, but the realities of that is like, you know, I was first off embarrassed to even ask my family for anything um yes. you know the second off we didn't have finances like that to to send me anything so you know art had become my hustle you know that was a way not only could i have that outlet but i used it as a hustle mm -hmm. to make greeting cards and so you know i was looking through some of my images and i pulled up um you know two of the patterns that I used to make greeting cards off of. And, you know, it would, I could put a greeting card together in like a matter of 15 minutes. And this was one of the holiday greeting cards um, that I had put together. You and, go. you know, it just, I remember one around one Christmas um, from like the November to about the middle of of December. I remember putting together about three hundred 
you know, Christmas cards for people. So when we talk about sharing our experiences and skills with others, um, there was a number of individuals on those yards that I actually helped by sending greeting cards to. And some of those who couldn't read or write, um, you know, I would also put a poem in there. I would also create, make the envelope and, and address the envelope. So all they had to do was put a stamp on it and put it in the mail and send it out. So, you know, through that art, it allowed me an opportunity to connect others to their families, you know, and I just wanted to share that piece. I think that that is magnificent. Could I, could I share a couple of pieces with you guys? Is that absolutely. all right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. <laughs> so hold on one sec here. Desktop. Okay, here we go. I've never done this. So bear with me. Bear with me. <laughs> oh, apparently I have to tell it it's okay to do it. So hang on one sec here. Uh, I'm telling it, do you know, uh, oops, sorry. Do you know, while everyone else was in the world learning technology, me and my friends here, we were not. <laughs> <laughs> so it is especially ironic that I am able to talk to you all. All right. Can you see my, my screen? No. Oh, of course not. Well, hold on. <laughs> you might have to be a co-host. Oh. So. oh, no, 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 no. I had okay. to, I had okay. to just approve it. Here we go. All right. I don't know. Are you, you're not did able you, to. Did you click on share screen at the bottom of your screen and then click and then click what you want to share? And then you click OK. So oh. you have to click at share screen on the bottom of the Zoom. OK, let me go back. My apologies. That's OK. Um, I don't know how to get. Oh, wait. How do I get back? There we are. OK, so I go to share screen. Share screen and then click on whatever the uh, page is that you want to uh, share. OK. There now you go. Oh, yay. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. and click on that back one so we can see it better the one that's well moving. i tell you what i think it's just going to be easiest for me to go to my media page so let me um this is uh i attract yeah. freedom and um it is it, it has music too but uh it's a piece that i did that was still and i've learned how to animate faces this is a short animation I would really much rather show you, so let me just show you um, my, here we go, my NFTs, here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. And, and of course my computer's like, no, Marianne, I must think about it for a moment. <laughs> you guys, I really just would like to complain about technology in general. <laughs> me too. Oh, I'm really glad that we're going to complain again about it together. <laughs> Jeez. You know, I, I, I swear to you, I'm actually good at this. Okay, let's see. What should we do? I actually would love to show you um, Fierce. This is what I did with a Chinese pop artist. And um, what she does is she's got a double album coming out. Come on. Here we go. I'm going to move this over to the side. All right. That's amazing. All right, here we go. Ready? All right. Let's minimize this just a little bit. There we go. So this is Fierce. And, and you can look at it on my link tree, and it has the sound, which it won't play because I'm in the meeting right now. But she has an entire song that she does to this. And then... Um, I've done lots of pieces that have been um, about charities and doing charity work. I did this piece called The Invisible Opponent. Oh, now it plays music. And what's interesting about it is it shows the full, um, the full facial expressions, you know? I never knew you could make a painting come alive like that. 
Wow. And uh, so I must have had not the right file for that one, but um, there is another one. I'll show you one more and then I'll, I'll let you guys come and find yourself. That's a nice one, but that's not what I meant to show you. Um, one day, you guys, I'm gonna be so fast at this. You're going to say, Marianne, how were you ever that silly girl that took forever to do any kind of reveal on our Zoom meeting? Seriously, you have to download now. <laughs> so how is everyone? <laughs> Here it is, okay. I remember sitting in my bunk and doing these pieces and thinking to myself, I wish I could make this come to life like it is in my imagination. So that's what NFTs allow me to do. And thank you for letting me do that. And go ahead and, and take me off profile here. How do I? Just click down there where it says share, uh, stop share. Click on uh, stop share at the top of your screen. I knew that. I'm just there testing you, you well. Okay. <laughs> And um, if you can bear with me, I have something hanging on the wall right behind my desk and I'll have to unblur myself. But I oh. have, a, I have a, a, a painting that- um, We can only see the top of it. No, I'm gonna get no background so you can see the whole thing. Can you oh see? my gosh, I would love a photo of that. I don't have that. Yeah, I have this all framed up and every time I took a picture, it seemed to glare, but I will, I will send you a copy. I can it. take me and, three pictures from three different angles and I'll unglare it. <laughs> and I just want to tell you what it says on the back. It says, my faith is the essence of who I am. It is my hope, my laughter, my confidence. It leads me through tears and reminds me that everything I need is already here. I am loved. Mm -hmm. I am blessed. That is true no matter where or what is happening. Thank you. Written in truth is the name of this piece. So I can't, there we go. So I, um, I did so many, I don't even remember them all, but I would love a photo, even if it's glared, I'd love it. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I still have some more pictures to send to you. So um, Kat, I, I know we don't have video of you. Does anyone have any of your art they can share with us? Um, you know, I don't know that anyone does that's in this meeting. Um, well, I'm so I sorry. If I, could. I know, <laughs> and I don't know why my video isn't working, so. Well, maybe, is there anything online anywhere? Maybe I could post it for you. You know, there probably is if you look in Indivisible's uh, Phoenix's site or um, let me think of who else might have it. There might be some on Unite Here site um, or Case. Just some of the, the, uh, some of the actions. Someone just suggested that you email it. Uh, you oh. could email it to me if you want or to, to Kim. I can, that I can do because I do have some. Hang on a second. Me, yes, and, and we that. can try and put it up. While you're doing that, we did have a question um, pop up in the chat. And I know several of you kind of answered already some of the other questions we had. Um, but I, I wanted to uh, bring up, let's see, it's at 12.03. A question that said to the oh. artist, um, do you all subscribe to a particular theme in your work? And the person went on to explain, a gentleman artist I met at an APLA event encouraged me to stick to my contrast style. He said that would be what is recognized and identified as my particular style. So I think she's asking if you have a particular style that people identify with you. With, with me? Or with any with of it, with any of any of the artists that are on the panel here. Do you want guys want to take it first? Do you want me to take it? <laughs> well, oh, go ahead. You, you you go you go. Go ahead. I mean, you know, really, as an artist, I I've just you you know that was the one space I could move off impulse. 
you know, and and really not, you, you know, when you think of freedom, when I sit down at the table and I'm like, okay, um, you know, what do I want to do? It, it just... It, it just gives me that space to just be creative off of, off of an impulse and not really be bound or, or confined, you know? And it's sad that now I'm out, I'm, I'm like constantly on the front line and I wish I could do art more. Um, I say I'm gonna retire at 50 and I would love to get back into art, but you know, it just, while I was confined, I wouldn't even really think about nothing but about getting to the table and, and leaving prison. And so there's times I've started um, drafting something or sketching something. And what I envisioned at the start wasn't what I got when I completed it. It had morphed into something else. So, you know, I, I really say that, you know, um, stick into a style or, or, or whatever, it, it, that's really the lanes of a lot of artists. However, you know, me and what I was doing, it was just like, what do I feel like today? Where do I want to go? Um, so anyone else? For me, it was, it's, it's very simple. It's a, it's a formula, everything vivid and bright that did not exist in prison and the laws of attraction. I believe 100% that you get what you put out. So if you want good, put out good. And if you want negativity, worry. And that's why worry is a sin in my book because it attracts worry and reasons for worry. Thank you. And I, I see from Ellie that um, um, there was an art show. Yeah, I've seen several art shows uh, from the women on particularly the cruise yard and Ellie coordinated one in 2017 and uh, says that if we go to and I don't know how to do Instagram, so I'm so sorry, mm -hmm. but L-A-P-W-G on Instagram, we could see the art work by them. But Didn't there are I other more than that. Did I do art in that? <laughs> you might have 2017. Yeah, it's before yeah, you were out. I think I probably I wasn't. Out. I don't. I don't know if I remember your uh, artwork uh, specifically in that show, but I could be wrong. Well, I, you can see some of Mary Ann's pieces at uh, in Tucson because uh, we have a show going on right now at uh, Coffee Exchange on Tanka Verde in Tucson, and mm -hmm. several of her pieces, along with many pieces from artists within Perryville. Uh, are on display and available for purchase uh, there. So let me just put that shameless plug out there. There are some um, beautiful pieces there, including by Deborah Moonla, who is a just, I just absolutely love her. If you see her, please tell her. <laughs> I will. All right. I, I, I sent you a couple of them, Marianne, so you can, these are more recent ones that I did from the um, Freedom Ride that we took across country. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Ooh, ooh, ooh. Some of the did you send it to me? Yeah, I sent them to your email, I guess. Gmail? Or... Yeah, to your Gmail. Okay, hold on, I'm looking. It's what I have from the emails that I have from you and Khalil. All right, hold on one sec here. Do you know, I don't see it. Do you think, could you send it to, to Kim? Kim, do you have a convenient email address? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, let's see. Are, are there any other questions from um, you know from from those of you who are still on on the call? Um, if you have any questions for the art, I artists? have another question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, just the artist. And any one of those guys can answer this question. But in, in prison, there's there's a certain atmosphere. There's a certain sadness. There's a certain loneliness. There's a certain everything. Uh, so in prison, you paint one thing to your emotions and how you feel. When you're out and like Kat and like Khalil, if you were to put, put a portrait or talk about a portrait, 
will be the same thing. Will there be something different about how you display your emotions and feelings and stuff like that as an artist? I, I didn't get that. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't quite get all of it either. <laughs> David, turn your, turn your camera off and and ask your ask re ask your question. Okay. Yeah, he's having a lot of trouble with Wi-Fi, so he's, I think he's going to move to a different room to try and ask it, so we can hear him more clearly. Okay, can can you guys hear me? It's still a little spotty, David. You sound like Optimus Prime. You do sound like Optimus Prime. <laughs> I mean, that's quite distinguished. <laughs> No, it's not working, David. But while we're waiting for David to get to one of the rooms that does work, um, are any of you doing things now that help uh, promote hope, healing, and humanity through your artwork? So, Khalil, mm -hmm. can you tell us what you're doing? Absolutely. If I can share uh, my screen, I am. Give me one second here. I am, um, you know, I created a logo and this is kind of like, you know, when I'm doing a lot of speaking engagements, I, I look at myself as like this social justice Avenger. Um, I guess I would be the Hulk, you, you know, cause of my size or whatever. But, um, um, you know, this logo, I started drafting while I was incarcerated just with the hope that I get one more opportunity, you know, to get out and make those changes. More. So, um, what I mean, this is the, it's the city of Arizona. Hold on a second, uh, Khalil. David, we need you to mute yourself because uh, uh, it's interrupting Khalil's. Or if someone who's in charge of this can mute David uh, Shepard temporarily, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. There you go. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so this, this shield, I look at it as like our social justice shield. And it's a silhouette of the state of Arizona. And inside of that silhouette, um, it's, it's the abbreviation A and a Z. With the, with the flag collaged into um, the state. And let me see here, because I probably can, there's a better version of it. So, you know, I use this and I put village standing together just to really have people mindful that we can overcome the obstacles that, or, or the issues that plague society if we stand together. So, um, when a person comes out of prison, you know, I go and I donate a shirt to them. First one's free. I'm not, but um, also with some of those proceeds, it allows me to buy boots and other tangible items or to assist, assist people that sometimes reentry programs, those, those grants um, or that money is for specific things. So, um, you know, I'm on the front line. I'm, I'm out there and, you know, my fight is not to just get people out of prison, but also be that mentor and that guide to help them stay out. So, um, you know, my website is ourworlduniversal.com. And, you know, I just came up with different variations to represent, um, you know, the logo. So this logo right here, my mom passed away eight months after my, my release. Um, and she passed away from breast cancer. So, you know, I had to do a breast cancer awareness theme. And this is, um, you know, my, my thought process because my mom didn't really share what she was fully going through. Um, it was a private moment I had to accept, but, you know, I thought that she was in a better place than she let people know, but she didn't feel comfortable sharing um, that. So, you know, my thinking around this color scheme was, you know, we're standing with you because sometimes 
Um, it's just good to let people know that, hey, even though you might not want to share or you or you can't share or you don't have the words, was just, hey, we're here standing with you. Um, and then there's this one was inspired by Raiders fans in, in Arizona. Mm -hmm. No hot, hot there, but <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the original color scheme on the black shirt. So, you know, I'll put the link in the chat box, um, but this is part of my everyday advocacy, my movement. Um, you know, this logo is our social, social justice shield. It's a beacon of hope. I, I sent a couple to you, Khalil. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me look for that. And Kat, do you have anything that you're doing now um, with your art? Okay. I, yeah, I do a lot of um, art for different actions, uh, particularly for Indivisible. Uh, and there, there's yeah. some of the, that is one uh, from our Freedom Ride that we took to DC. That's so beautiful. These are actually some of the people that participated. Uh, that were a part of it, um, but yeah, this is this is what I do, um, you know. But the stuff that I do for like different actions and things, um, like I, I, I did a banner for an action we did at uh, what's his name's office, the uh, attorney general, and his staff came out and actually wanted to buy it <laughs> to give it to him. <laughs> it wasn't very flattering, but, you know, he was basically, it was a just banner of him stepping on people, people's voting rights. So that, that is the type of art that I do a lot of right now. This stuff that you're seeing is stuff that I do on a personal, you know, for myself. I love it. And Miriam, what are you doing now with your art um, as far as helping to, um, you know, raise awareness maybe about those in incarcerated or uh, about restoring hope and, and healing and humanity? Every piece I do. <laughs> I just don't do pieces that aren't about that. Um, every piece I've done right. <laughs> yeah. is, is about uh, compassion, uh, freedom, love, kindness, and equality. It is the essence of everything that I believe in. And uh, if someone isn't feeling that way, then I try to find a way to help them create so that they can feel what that is like. There's nothing more gratifying than helping other people. Nothing. <laughs> I see that Set Beer has a question. If you want to unmute yourself. I, I didn't notice the hand raised. I'm sorry. I, thank you so much. I, I can't type in my chat right now. That's why I, I needed to, that's why I had my hand up. Um, <laughs> so I, I saw the link for the, whatever those things are, NFTs or whatever they're called, which I really appreciate because I, I would love our youth in our programs to be able to do things with that. Yeah. Um, but I do want to know, um, I, I, I want to thank you all so much, so much. And I want to know if um, any of you have seen any advocacy um, through or, or artwork that speaks to um, women or men who've been trafficked and then arrested under uh, prostitution laws, because that seems like unjust to me. Um, although I do believe that no matter what, <laughs> I don't care if you committed the crime or didn't, you deserve, you, you all deserve to be treated uh, with as human beings, as uh, beloved members of our community. But I just wonder um, if there's any aspect of the art that you can speak about uh, that particular injustice of human trafficking. Thank you. I can tell you I've done charity pieces. Um, and I've, I've done some fundraisers. I've also down, uh, donated, um, 
but I don't specifically identify with that myself. There are uh, several artists that are doing pieces right now on Native, missing Native American women um, because we don't know what happened to them. And that's a very touchy subject with, um, you know, Native people right now. And I've, so, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It was just a sigh at the end, Khalil, because you don't get enough exposure for that. Yeah, and, and I've seen art, I've seen art, um, you know, addressing um, human trafficking as part of articles and things like that. But the bigger part of it is, you know, there's majority of the artists around just mass incarceration overall. You know, human trafficking is is a section of issues that plague um, our criminal legal system here. You know, and across this country, it's it's a significant issue. Um, but the bigger part of it is like people are saying, "Hey, we need to rethink um, how we view justice." That was one of the whole. Um, purposes of, of this year's uh, theme, you know, hope healing humanity, because, you know, currently justice doesn't equal punishment. Um, so, you know, how that plays out, there's, there's a lot more art really defining what justice should look like and how we heal. So, um, but that doesn't mean um, some of the artists I know won't take up the issue or, or, you know, look to kind of create something either, um, you know, moving forward. So thank you for bringing that up, uh, Sat Beer. We had David here for just a second and I've lost him now. <laughs> uh, I was gonna try to get his question in before he lost his Wi-Fi, but um, I did have a question from, oh, Rabbi Barkin. Um, yeah, the, uh, the work that I do, wanting to know more about what I do with the artists from Perryville. Um, I, I just go wherever anybody asks me. I bring the art. I hang it up. I talk to people about it. I talk to them about the artists and about what is going on and how art is healing, um, both inside and out of the prison walls, and just kind of use the art to raise awareness um, about what's going on inside as well as um, uh, what we can do, uh, advocate for as far as programming. And so most of the art programs have now been canceled. And uh, so that's very devastating to these artists. But it, I'm always told uh, when I bring the art, I, I have people come up to me and they go, wow, I didn't know this art was gonna be so uplifting and so beautiful. I, I thought it would be dark and, and and you know, like like a horror story or something. And no, it's not at all. Um, mo most uh, most of the artists that uh, I, I've had the pleasure of working with use the art as almost to a, a way to escape the gray and the brown and the black and the dreary and the despairing and and use it as a way to to bring hope not only to themselves but all who view the painting. So you'll find it's very beautiful. Um, and and uh, uplifting, I, I believe. So David, you're back with us. I don't wanna talk while you have a, a clear link. So ask your question. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I was asking the question to those guys that, can you hear me? Kind of. Okay, can you hear me now? It's a little more like Optimus Prime than we want, but it's okay. Uh, uh, I don't know why you guys can't hear me. I'm not muted, am I? No, you're not muted, but go ahead and ask your question. I think we can make it out this time. Okay. I was talking to the artist and I was saying while in prison, it's, 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 it's a dreary type situation. There's sadness, there's, there's loneliness, there's all kinds of things. So I would think that in prison, your paintings and your artwork is based on your emotions and feelings at that time. But when you are released, back into society, 
does your paintings reflect the happiness, the, the non loneliness, the compassion, and all that stuff? Still didn't hear it, huh? Yeah, we heard. Oh, okay. That, that's to any of you artists, doesn't matter. So does the does the art while we were inside in uh, reflect, you know, kind of like our emotions of of you know why we were in, in inside? Um, right. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, the biggest part about that social justice shield, you know, one of the things that I always talk about and why. Um, I'm on the front line and continuously advocating this because there's a lot of injustices, inhumane treatment and conditions in the Arizona prisons here. So, you know, that social justice shield and my overall um, interactions and, and work at the ACLU, you know, one of our goals is to safely depopulate our prison system. And, and how do we do that? You know, one of the one of the ways we do it on the front end by trying to divert as many people away from going into the system who shouldn't be there in the first place. We stop criminalizing mental health. Um, we stop criminalizing addiction. And then um, we stop criminalizing homelessness. Those are three areas that impact our prison population. And it doesn't matter what they trump up those charges to be, we put people in prison. So that shield is, a, is also an awareness, but then the bigger part of it is once a person comes out, like I said earlier, is how do we form this village around them to stop them from going back to prison? With, with those two things, um, those two actions in play, I, I do think we can safely reduce our prison population. And so, like I said, that shield is a beacon you know, when, when people have that shirt on, when they see the, those stickers in the window, or, you know, it doesn't matter being here on this platform, people, people know, okay, I'm right around the corner from help. Um, so while I was on the yard, that was just the one thing, you know, the number of times me working in the kitchen where we see on the food, not for human consumption. And I'm like, what are they serving us? Um, you know, where we don't get our state issue of clothing, but they want you to pay um, for the stuff in commissary, you know, pay to get new pants as if they were Levi's. Um, you know, that's that type of stuff. It really, it had me boiling inside. And, you know, you can only speak up so much on a yard before you start getting targeted. I've received BS tickets. Um, for my advocacy and, and standing strong on, on trying to right those wrongs. But boy, when they released me, like I said, it, you know, all I could do is express my displeasures through my art. And, and you know, since I've come out, um, you know, use that art, like I said, to bring people together. You know, it's a common denominator when you're really trying to connect with people, because I say, if you're not going to appreciate art, music, or, or food together, then you're probably not going to appreciate anything after that. So, um, yeah, thank, good question. Art is, art is a way of connecting everything, connecting with people. And even inside, it was still a way of connecting. Um, and finding a place where you have some common ground where you may not have common ground otherwise. Um, it opens up the conversations. It opens up the channels between people who might not even speak to each other otherwise, especially on the yard. And you guys know that, you know, you may not talk to a whole lot of individuals that are there, but having, you know, when you start doing art and people start seeing it, they are drawn to talk to you. They want to. They want to see it. They want to know what it is. And before you know it, you have people sharing that, or sharing a part of themselves, or 
you know, and for me, it, it was a way of connecting with people um, where we actually were able to change some of the rules and, and, and some of the way things were done and, and create organizations like, you know, leadership organizations like a long term organization and an inmate council where we, you know, I mean, that, that was what opened the doors for a lot of those things. And even now out here, it still is a way of communicating with other people. It's still a way of bridging that gap that would otherwise not be bridged. So, yeah, it's very much a part of everything, you know, that, that, that I do. And I think every other artist does as well, especially those that are incarcerated. Thank you, Kat and Khalil. I don't know how much time we have, but I have a feeling that we've gone over it. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, if there's anyone who has a pressing question that they would like to ask, ask it now. Um, otherwise, I think we'll just go on ahead and, and let people go on and get their lunch. And one, yeah. one more thing. Um, we'll take one more question if people have it. However, I do want to um guide you over to afn's um to the website to look at the hope healing in humanity uh t-shirts please support afn by purchasing a t-shirt and sweatshirt um and if you have if you need help navigating the website any type of way please feel free to reach out to afn um you know, we would love to assist you with that, but it'd be nice to see all of Arizona in those Hope Hill and Humanity shirts and really make that statement for 2022. There's also the AFN um, sweatshirts. I mean, excuse me, the red original logo, the AFN, and this is the Stand Together um, version of it. So please uh, hit the website and I wanna thank everybody for being here today. We did have one question pop up from um, Mustafa Bahar. I hope I said that right. Um, the question is, what's your relationship with time now? How do you value it? <laughs> Kat, do you want to take that? Sure. Um, <laughs> there is just not enough of it to catch up with everything that I lost in 15 years. But I will do, I do everything I can every day sometimes for many more hours than I probably should. Just, just connecting with everything around me, uh, you know, whether it's work, whether it's my family, whether, whether I'm just out fishing. Um, but time is something that, you know, I, I look at it like this. I slept literally, I slept for 15 years, not in a literal sense, but being locked away and not being able to to be a part and even though I've been out nearly 30 years now it doesn't it still doesn't seem like I have caught up with that 15 years so and and real quick with me I'm I'm constantly eating garlic I'm constantly wearing garlic necklace because I'm 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 in I'm always in a fight with time vampires people that like to suck time out of you and that is the most valuable thing you can't get back. You know, you can waste a lot of things in life. However, don't waste my time and I won't waste yours. Um, you know, I'm more appreciated, appreciative of it. And, you know, the other thing is, you know, there, there are several individuals who've asked for a few seconds to just make a small change in their life. And so now I evaluate my time to see how I'm consistently needing to change and needing to grow and really not trying to wear concrete boots, you know, and, and just be stuck in this presence. Um, so, you know, as I said, I don't waste people's time and I don't like uh, them to waste mine. So I value it with the utmost and in that space build authentic relationships. Thank you all. I, there's one last question in the chat. I don't know if any of you can stay on long enough for them to answer this one. Um, it's, um, I, I believe it's from Irene Sanders Rushton. 
um, about <laughs> maybe related to Khalil. Um, each artist represents something that inspired them. How do you conceive representing a piece if you were to have focus or inspiration from, for example, human trafficking, or if this can be represented in future work that you do? Hmm. Either one of you want to tackle that one? Yeah, I could. Or Kat, you want to go first or? Okay. Something that inspired me, huh? <laughs> There's a lot of things that inspire me. This group did for one. So there is, there's a lot of things that inspire. That's really hard. That's a really difficult one for me to like, because there's so much out there. Um, you know, that does inspire me. I, 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 the fight for criminal justice, the fight for social justice. All of those things uh, inspire me to do a lot of artwork that addresses those issues because sometimes that's the only way that a message that I might want to send gets out is if I put it in a piece of art. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's stuff that, that is going to end up in future work that, that deals with all of those issues. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, right, you know, right now, like the Freedom Ride that, that I did with the organization I work with, um, the art that you, the two pieces that you saw, there are several more of those that are that are done that I'm working on because I would like to to be able to show those to the people that are fighting so hard for their voting rights and that were part of that. So I, I guess that would be one one of the things that would be a future work, you know, just just to have those people have actually give some of those pieces away to them. And and that and that's where I say that inspiration um, comes with it, it's like taking a snippet of time and saying, "Hey, I'm I want to do a piece." around this at the time of a lot of the art I drafted up was, you know, about the conditions or just wanting to get away or, you know, use my imagination. But, you know, the bigger piece of, of inspiration and in, in a lot of the things that's going on, like Kat said, you know, social justice, racial justice, uh, criminal, legal or justice. You know, I also make sure that inspiration is not tokenizing other people's experiences. So, you know, I don't want to, you, you know, I've, I understand the issue of human trafficking globally and the need for it. Um, but the bigger piece is, you know, to become an artist and you create a piece or you're inspired to create a piece based on and uh, a situation and somebody says, I like that. And they wanna give you a million dollars. Or if you say, no, I don't want any money on, they take your image and then start selling it themselves. Um, you know, I see a lot of that. And, and so, you know, inspiration is one thing, but then we also have to make sure we're not tokenizing those experiences. Um, to where we're creating more of a buzz around the image and not the issue. So I will uh, just put that there. Well, thank you to uh, Khalil, Kat and Mary Ann for your time and, and your honesty and, and opening your heart uh, to us today. Mary Ann had to leave because as this is her first day as a totally free person, her family was waiting to take her out to lunch. Um, so she had to go. Um, but I, I do want to say thank you to all of you who stayed with us to hear um, the messages from these incredible artists and hope that you will be inspired 
um, to purchase that t-shirt and to check out um, Kat and Mary Ann's uh, work as well online. And if any of you would like to host a show, uh, an exhibition at your organization, um, just let me know and I will bring what I have and we will have a wonderful time. So thank you all very much. I hope you have a blessed day. Thanks to AFN for uh, this incredible morning that we've had and blessings um, to, to you all. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye everyone. Thank you for having us.